What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I wanna talk about, a, about something that I get questions about constantly and I wanna give you some pros and cons to it because in my opinion, there's more pros to cons or the, pro, the pros outweigh the cons on doing this. And that's whether you should plant food plots in a low pH soil. Because I, I, I see it on social media all the time and I'll get this question on Instagram and YouTube and emails. It's like, Dave, I have this low pH soil. I have, you know, 4.8 or 5.2 or 5.6 or, you know, I'm more aligned, but, you know, the, my pH is not going to be right in order, for, you know, to plant something. So I'm just not going to plant. And to me, it's the silliest thing not to plant because... Now, if you have, say, a 4.6 pH and you try to plant something, most likely, without doing anything, most likely you're going to have a failure. But if you have this low pH soil in the fives and low sixes, plant. Because what's the alternative? Not, not to plant and you just let the, the ground go bare and weeds to grow and you're not improving it by not planting. So if, you're, if you have this lime that you're adding, on a low pH soil, lime takes time to react. So even if you have, say, a 5.0 pH and you lime your soil in three months, it's not gonna change much. It might go to a 5.2, 5.3, something like that, but it's not gonna you know, jump a whole number within three months. But if you have that lime in the ground, it'll help those plants you know, suck up some nutrients and it'll help you grow something in that plot. So let's go over the pros and cons. Let's go over the cons first. If you have low pH and you don't plant anything because you have a low pH, because in your mind you're thinking, well, if it's low pH, then nothing's gonna grow, so what's the point? Well, what's the alternative? Bare soil. So if you have bare soil, it's not helping the soil. It's not working the soil. It's not building the soil. It's not you're not incorporating anything into the soil to help you in the long run. So if you're not planting, then you just have bare soil and then you have weeds that grow. And later on, when, when you do decide to plant, then you have weeds to take care of when you could have just planted to help probably eliminate 75, 80% of the weeds from actually growing in the first place. Number two is weeds. You know, if you have weeds in a food plot, then it's gonna cost you more money for chemicals to kill and people freak out about weeds anyway so then you have more frustration on that end is dealing with weeds so in a low ph soil you're better off planting because if you say you plant like winter wheat it's going to shade out probably 75 80 85 90 percent of the weeds that could actually come up through and germinate and then if you're adding the lime as well you know weeds thrive in acidic soil most weeds and if you're liming, it's going to prevent a lot of those weeds from actually thriving in the first place. Number three, there's no attraction. And what I mean by that is if, you're ha if you have some private property and you're wanting to create these food plots to hunt over or just create a traction so you can hunt you know, some transition areas between bedding and feeding, if you don't plant, then you have no attraction, right? So just because you have low pH doesn't mean anything it just means you have to work on it plant your food plot so you do have an attraction so you can create more opportunities more bow stands you know more opportunities to harvest the deer with your bow or gun or whatever you're hunting with so go ahead and plant number four goes back to what i said earlier it's silly you know you get a lot of these questions and stuff on social media and you'll get a thousand different responses most of them just you can just tell that no, nobody really has any clue what they're talking about they just spit stuff out and none of it makes sense and phone calls emails questions constantly people call and they're just they're so confused and that's why i'm making these videos is to, just to help you guys and keep them simple and just to simplify everything and it's silly if you have low ph make the steps add, add a little bit of lime you don't have to do it all at once if you can only afford or you know you know uh so many bags of lime you know five six bags of lime they're you know 380 a piece 387 four four and a quarter something like that for 50 pounds 
four bags is better than zero, ba zero bags. So build on it over time and work on it. But the number one important part of this is do not, I repeat, do not have bare soil. You don't want that. It's the worst thing you could possibly have when, when you're trying to improve soil is to have bare soil. It's it just doesn't make sense. So let's go to the pros because this is where I like. If you have low pH and you're working on it, you build soil. When you plant something green, when you plant something in some soil, you build the soil. You have the root structure developing. Depending on what you're planting, you're planting clovers. You can build nodules, produce nitrogen for the soil. You hold the soil together. You have those roots if you're planting brassicas or turnips or radishes or something. You have those radishes and stuff, you know, opening up the soil, working the soil, putting cracks in the soil so moisture can get in. And that's what happens when you plant. So over time, you also have that green manure going back in the soil, decomposing winter wheat, rye, clovers, building, you know, going in the soil and inc increasing the CEC. And that's going to go back to number two is when you build soil, goes to number two. It'll also go to number three or four. I'll share that in a minute. But when you plant something, you build soil, number two, it adds to your bank account. I made a video about this. When you plant something in the soil, especially buckwheat, you're adding to that bank account. You're improving the soil. So later on in life, later on in that food plot's life, next year, the following year, the following year, you're allowing your soil to give you something back. If you don't put any money into it, your bank account, you can't get any money out. You can't, you know, can't get nothing out of it. So if you don't do anything to your soil, you can't expect that soil to give you something back. Well, what does it give you? Well, it, when you build soil and you add to your bank account, later on, it gives you more tonnage per acre, right? More tonnage per acre is more food for deer. When you have more food for deer, the deer have no reason to leave your property because you have food. So it's very important is to build that bank account up, build that soil and go ahead and plant. Number three is number three with the con. Number three, you create a kill plot. Destination plot, depending how big it is, where it's set up, you have a kill plot, you have more opportunities to bow hunt, you have more transition areas, and you have a attraction, an evening food source. So again, just because you have low pH, doesn't mean you can't plant. When you plant, you have an ultimate food, you have ultimate food for deer, to create more opportunities to bow hunt because food is everything in a deer. You know, food controls everything in a deer's life. Food safety, you know, when you have bedding and food, it controls everything. You can predict them a lot easier. And this it will give you more opportunities to harvest a deer. Number four, save money. You're thinking, well, if you're planting, you're spending money, so how's it gonna save you money, okay? Number four is related to number one. When you build soil, so when you have low organic matter, low pH, low CEC, everything in that soil is low, low fertility levels, everything. When you plant buckwheat, clovers, whatever it is, sunflowers, and you're working that into the soil, you're increasing the CEC. When you increase the CEC of the soil, it allows that soil to hold more nutrients instead of leaching through the soil and you know washing away. When you do that, okay, you're holding more NPK. When you hold more NPK and pH, the lime, the following year when you go to do a soil sample, you'll need, say, initial planting, it calls for 300 pounds per acre of whatever it is, triple 19. When you plant something, you work that in the soil, you build organic matter, you have decomposing material, biomass in the soil. The following year, okay, you do all this. The following year, you might say, hey, your P8, your MPK improved. You might only need 150 pounds per acre, right? So you're like, oh, wow, you know, this is really working great. You know, I'll go ahead and plant again. So you plant some buckwheat in there again. You add a little, couple more bags of lime. You add a little bit more fertilizer. The following year, you do your soil sample, and it says, wow, you don't need... 
any zero pounds of fertilizer. It's because the CEC and organic matter is increasing. It allows that soil, the gives that soil the capability of holding more nutrients. So you don't need as much for the plant. Now, remember, every time you add lime to your food plot, you lower pH, or I'm sorry, every time you add fertilizer to your uh, soil, you drop pH. So a lot of times the companies now, I noticed in triple 10 fertilizer, they're adding pelletized lime in there. Because I've talked about this for many years now fertilizer has a lot of salts and stuff in it because when you buy a bag of fertilizer it's not all fertilizer it has a lot of fillers in it so triple 10 I noticed had the bag had the lime in it but triple 19 did not so every time you add fertilizer I always offset it with a few bags of lime because you don't want to go backwards you don't want to get your pH to a 6.5 or 7 and you're adding all this synthetic fertilizer and then all of a sudden you check it and the pH drop and you're like, what the heck is going on? It's because you need to maintain that. You know, a couple bags of, of lime will offset that pH drop from all the fertilizer. So when you build the soil and you, you get that up there to where all of a sudden you don't need any fertilizer, okay? You don't need to add any lime that year, right? Because you're not adding any fertilizer to drop your pH. You see what I'm, you see what I'm saying here? So it all comes back to saving money. That's the end goal is we all want to save money and you want to add to your bank account so it can save you money in the long run. And this is the pros to planting in low pH soil. Just because you have low pH does not mean you should not plant. Get in there, add a few bags of lime, work it, in, work it into the soil, plant something green and growing. What can you plant in low pH soils? Well, there's a few things. Typically winter wheat and winter rye is going to be your best option. I planted annual a mixture of annual clovers the very first year uh, on the property and in a woods food plot and the pH was a 4.6. We added a little bit of lime and that clover thrived in there. It grew like crazy. It was you know 18, 20 inches tall and we worked that back in the soil. Over the years, we need zero fertilizer. Most of our fields, Z need zero fertilizer. I added a little bit just to maintain what's there, a few bags of lime, and over the years, that's what happens. You save money. So, any questions, guys, post them down below and uh, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, this video helped you. It's the main goal here. If it did, let me know in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys on the next video.